Greetings, Uncle Travelling Matt here, and today is the end of what I think is my 13th day in um, Pakistan, and I am currently sitting in my hotel room in Peshawar, and wow, it's it's been really quite a remarkable day, uh, not that it's just happened just where I am. Um, last time I spoke to you, of course, I was in the airport about to fly here from Karachi, I woke up this morning, you know, got all my bags ready and that, and then um, had the car to the airport. The flight was great. I flew with um, Fly Jinnah, uh, which is, I guess, like a budget airline uh, of, of Pakistan. They're Ryanair, but it's a lot better than Ryanair. Uh, when you get food on it, and there was food already pre-ordered for me, um, but... Also, it's just so much friendlier. So two things happened. One, I got chatting to the guy next to me on the plane. He was a really nice guy. He was a a banker, like personal banking, not investment banking. And he was going up to um, Peshawar for I think some training or conference or something. So I chatted to him and he was telling me about his two kids. And he actually uh, had me do a little um, video intro to them because he wanted them to look at my YouTube channel. So when you see this, yeah, that's great. Um, Shabina, I think the daughter's name was, I can't remember the son's name. And his name was Muhammad Ali, like the boxer. And uh, so that was that. But also, I wanted a, a cup of tea. So I'd had my little meal, which was free. That was included with the, with the ticket price. And I thought, well, I'll have a cup of tea as well. And um, I didn't have my money on me at the, at the time. I said, oh, it's up in the bag, but I'll, I'll get it in a second. And I got a little pack of biscuits. And then the, uh, the stewardess says, oh, where are you from? From England and all that. And then she's like, it's on us. We like to have tourists. And, you know, no, no, this is, I'm, I'm the head stewardess on this plane. I'm giving you this. I was like, that, wow, that's like never happened to me before at all. And she was really nice. I also shared the flight with the Pakistani national cycling team. So one of their top cyclists was uh, um, on, sprawled across the seat behind us. And uh, it was quite strange because it was a very conservative place, like even by Pakistani standards, for sure. And she was there, you know, with her head uncovered in, in quite tight jeans. I thought, well, you don't get that very often in Pakistan. Uh, but I guess if you're part of the national cycling team, then there's a certain leeway. So uh, got off uh, at, at Peshawar, no issues there. And... Um, Got a car in to the centre. I, the hotel, I have to thank my friend Pierre Dupont. He recommended this one. It's the Empire Hotel. He said it's a good location and everything. I'm very happy with it. So I knew where I was going to go. Got this car and driving in, I, I was struck by how clean it is compared to the rest of Pakistan. Because Pakistan can be quite a filthy place. But Peshawar looked clean and swept and just nice. Um, the other thing that is, is big here, and I started seeing it going in and, and certainly seeing a lot more, is we're not far from Afghanistan. And what you see quite a lot here, uh, perhaps, I don't know, half, a third of the ladies, they actually wear the burqa. Um, and when I say the burqa, you know, like the Taliban one with the grill over the face. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, veiled ladies are pretty common in Pakistan. But the burqa, I have seen them, uh, you know, dotted around, but not many. There's quite a few in Lankana, actually. Um, don't quite know why. But um, here, they're very common, and they're all in different colours. There's been white ones, brown ones, kind of golden ones, black ones, occasional blue ones. But um, they're really... I mean, I remember first seeing them when, you know, people started talking about the Taliban in, like, 2000. And I remember there was... Um, I think it was Elle or one of those big magazines of Cosmopolitan did did an, uh, a, a big like feature on them. And just thinking, like, what kind of garment is that? Like, how oppressive is that? Um, and yet now I've seen them, you know, on the streets and there's loads of people wearing them. And uh, yeah, 
Wow. So anyway, I, I checked in the hotel, no problems. And then they said, oh, by the way, this man will go with you if you uh, leave the hotel. And I'm like, well, does it cost anything? And I like, know, but y you have to be accompanied. And it was basically a policeman armed with an AK-47. So I have spent the day with my own personal armed guard. Um, which I didn't expect. Pierre never told me that. And apparently, I've just spoken to him online, apparently he didn't have to have one then. I think they're tetchy because of the moss bombing uh, that was a few weeks ago. Um, and I spoke to the policeman about this over, over dinner, and I said, hey, you know, this moss bombing? And I'm like, why would the Taliban bomb a mosque? And he's like, well, they're saying they didn't do it. And um, he says they don't do mosques, they don't do women, and they don't do children. And then not claiming responsibility for it. So, so who did do it? And he kind of looked away and didn't want to answer. But there was a lot of policemen go to that mosque, about hundred odd, and that is why um, that is why that one was targeted. And you know, he's told me he's been in 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 gunfights with um, with uh, terrorists, and he was talking about I think it was his uncle or his cousin who was in one a few, about 10 years ago, and he got badly injured. He got shot, he shot two terrorists, then got shot himself. And they couldn't treat him in Pakistan, so he was sent to England, and he now lives in Manchester. And we actually had a, a chat with him on the phone. He, he wants to bring some tea back for him. And he's got a big gun wound on the side of his head. So, yeah, this is the kind of place I'm in now, where you walk around the bazaar and you're God. And, and that's what I did. I walked around the bazaar, and do you know what? I, like, I'm not a market person, but it was just this assault on the senses so um you know everything under the sun you know there were shoe shops leather shops clothes shops uh, food fish there was oh, oh everything everything but it's the smells and it's just the atmosphere and it's so i don't know it's like this arabian nights i mean the buildings are nothing special they're quite modern really but these little narrow like uh, alleyways, like a maze, and I'm following a guy wielding an AK-47, and you know, and then there's ladies in burkas walking past, and just yeah, people you know pushing carts, and wow. Then the call to prayer goes off. Peshawar is amazing. I love it. It's just brilliant, uh, and the highlight or maybe it's a low light really i don't know is there was um because the burka thing did fascinate me and then i saw this like crowd of women all sat in like a like in, uh, crowded around a shop just sat there on the floor and i thought well, that's a bit weird and then a bit further on there was another load of them and i says to my my police I said, oh, what's that all about and he says oh they wait there until someone donates some bread and then they they take the bread and and it was a bakery, so I actually gave a thousand, which is three quid, and that that you know the the bread is I think like twenty or fifty each, so that you know that gave quite a few of them some bread, and we had a cup of tea, and then I said I'd like to do that again, and he says well you know if you want I can take some photos. Oh, that, that'd be brilliant. And he says, what well, would be better? He says, rather than you just give him the money, you give it out yourself because then you make sure that he's not shortchanging you and that they're all actually getting it. So it was like, it was, just, it was a nice experience. Like, in another way, I felt it was a, a bit bad because it's like, oh, look at the white guy, you know, look how generous the white guy is. But I don't know, like, it, it's so hard to actually connect with women in this country. But I donated another thousand. I got this huge pile of, like, bread that I could hold to carry. And it was hot as well. And I was, like, giving it out to each of these. And, you know, someone like, oh, spoke a bit of English. But, like, oh, thank you, Uncle. Oh, you know, and, and all that. And so it, it, was, it was quite nice. It was quite a, a human moment, really. It was really pleasant. I'd like to do it again. Probably have to change more money to do it. But, <laughs> but you know. Yeah, and then, then we went for a meal, um, we, so we walked through all these bazaars, and we went for a meal, and it was in this, the, the guy that runs the place, apparently famous, so I had a photo with him doing this, you know, and um, and it was, Peshawar is famous for its tikka, and we had this tikka karahi, mutton karahi, and uh, also this, these tikka kind of rib things, it was gorgeous, it was really nice. Uh, and then we went on his the policeman's motorbike to the Sada, which is the other bazaar. That's the more modern one. Had a wander on there again. 
still pretty atmospheric. And uh, then I, I bought a bag because I'm fed up with carrying carrier bags onto airplanes. So that was my day in Peshawar. Not a lot happened in terms of sights, but by God, this was just, this is so atmospheric. This is, you, oh, wow. This is one hell of a country. One hell of a country. And so from Peshawar, this is Uncle Travelling Matt saying, keep travelling. Thank you.